Thanks for staying with us. Now, over the past few weeks, the internet has been a buzz with stories and reactions to the proposed bill by the Nigerian Senate to place restrictions on social media and the Nigeria's internet space. Now, the bill has been met with widespread criticism, with many faulting several of its clauses for a perceived hindrance to free speech. Still, a lot of gray areas shroud the proposed bill in what is fast becoming a norm for the African um, government. Now, let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Way Show Africa One with the hashtag Way Show. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038 So I'm going to bring in Dr. Olufimilayo in a minute. Isi, I wanted to hear your thoughts on the social media bill, what you think, you know, how we are... Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, what's your thoughts, rather? Uh, my thought is, um, like you said... Are you are confused a lot of, like me? That, like you said, there are a lot of gray areas that mm -hmm. we are not really clear on. And Uti actually um, made a difference between the hate speech uh, mm -hmm. bill and the uh, falsehood mm -hmm. uh, bill. So because of this, we are all confused mm -hmm. about which is which. But mm -hmm. however, I think that... Um, the, um, the youth of Nigeria or individuals, we have tried to use the social media to interact and pass our messages across. For them to now try to tell us to um, put a hold on it or, or they can monitor. Shut it down at any time. I heard the minister talking. Actually, monitor what we actually say on social media. It is indeed an infringement scary. on human rights. Scary, it, scary. It is. Uti? Yeah, so I mean, uh, for me, uh, uh, the, the clarity, or, or when I started to look at the bill, and it says, um, a, according to the bill, so a person can't transmit a statement that will affect the security of any part of Nigeria, affect public health, public safety, public finance, um, affect Nigeria's relationship with other countries, or cause enmity or hatred towards a person or group of persons. It's very broad, so it's subject to interpretation, misinterpretation, whichever side you want to look at it from. Um, how do you enforce it? How do you ensure that? Um, how, how do you, I mean, how do you make it work? Because I, I might say something which somebody else might find offensive, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then it's interpreted under one of these things. So for me, given what we've seen, I think that everybody has a responsibility to post, to at least verify the news before they post. So I think it's, um, I can't remember which organization it is that has the five W's that you should think about when you're posting um, on, on social media or you're posting online. So I think there's a responsibility there that everybody has to have because of the far reaching effects. But I think that when we come to this bill, the gray areas are just too much. It's subject to interpretation, misinterpretation, whichever one you want Absolutely. to call it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there's a lot of definition that would have to go into this. And my, the question I wanted to ask is, how do we think this is, if it was ever to get signed, would we see the creation of a new agency or a new institution? Uh, Another committee. To monitor this bill? <laughs> ah, they want to pay new salaries with that. <laughs> All right, so Another Dr. Hame Olufumilayo <laughs> is a medical doctor based in the United mm -hmm. Kingdom. And he is very, very visible on Twitter, ensuring that the youth are talking and fully engaged with social concerns. And he's joined us um, via Zoom as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Olufumilaya, for joining us. Hi, thank you for calling me. Good evening. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so you heard our conversation and the banter on um, the social media bill. Let's hear your, um, like your summation first before we, we throw in our questions. Okay, so for me, I think the social media bill um, is a very suspicious bill, just like... Um, it is said. Um, and I think it's a funny way of smuggling some sort of control over free speech. Because again, what does the social media bill aim to achieve or aim to do that you don't already have in the Cybercrime Act? Hmm. So if you know anything or you check up the Cybercrime Act, to a large extent, most of those fears have been covered there. Um, there's already some sort of legal punishment for um, falsehood or false information or um, defamation and those kind of things. So why are you particularly picking on social media? So uh, do we have a newspaper bill? Do we have a radio bill? Why, why are you picking on social media? 
speech should be free, but at the same time, speech should not be reckless. That's a basic law, or that's a basic legal fact. So what's special about social media? So you, I, 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 I love what you said about free, um, um, free speech, but it should not be reckless. So yes. that's the point, you know, how do we then now look at fake news? How do we address fake news? Because misinformation, you know, mm. is a big deal, right? Yeah. Misinformation is a big deal. It can, it can change the entire and turn the entire system upside down when we pass the wrong information. So how do we control um, fake news? When you're saying recklessness, you know, with your information, what if these people decide to be reckless? How do you now put um, controls? So to a large extent, the, the only or the most effective way to control fake news is to put out true news. If you look at the way Nigeria is going, government has not been honest. Government has not been sincere. In my own opinion, the biggest spreader of fake news is the government itself. So the government continues to put out lies and lies day after day. They've been reckless. They've been irresponsible. But, when it but comes that is not hundred percent correct. One hundred fifty thousand people saw people literally being shot on Instagram Live. Now, a government official came to say that an Instagram Live is a photoshopped document or a photoshopped content. So, how do you say that kind of thing? And then you come to talk to me about fake news and you expect me to take you seriously. You literally do fake news every day. The Nigerian army, the day of the event, said they were never there. A few days after said, oh, we were there, but we shot blank bullets. How do you reconcile that? So again, like they say, whoever is going to come to equity must come with clean hands. If the government wants to talk about fake news, the government, first of all, has to show seriousness when it comes to news. What it looks like is a desperate attempt to control the narrative now that they failed in doing that with social media, because you can't just wake up and, for instance, you can control what you put on NTA or Radio Nigeria or whatever silly station you want, but you can't control social media that way. Now, the fact that a lot of people now take it upon themselves to post the news as they see it, suddenly social media is a threat. So, I mean, we have to be honest with ourselves here. If the aim is for people to get true reliable information, then it has to be a, a, a corroboration between government and the people and both parties have to be sincere. One party cannot insist on being insincere and dishonest while at the same time mandating the other party to, to play by the right by rules, the rules. Or, or, to, or to ensure that they check their information. Is anybody checking government's information? Is anybody checking government's news? Or is government free to spread fake news but people are not. Who's going okay. to be checking government? Okay, Dr. Olufemilayo, there is uh, recently uh, a lawmaker mm. stated that um, mm. social media should be regulated, kind of, because um, uh, influencers and individuals tend to use it to incite violence. Okay, so what's your take on this? Do you think social media is used by influencers and individuals to incite violence? Especially bearing in mind that most of these looters, that actually the people who actually participated in um, um, looting, did not do not might or might not have a, a, a smartphone. So God bless you. That was what I was going to say <laughs> next. So let's let's look at how let's look at how the the trajectory of events have been. The Ensas protest, putting things into context, was largely peaceful, mostly peaceful. The few disruptions in the Ensas protest only only happened when police got involved. As long as Ensas prote protesters were somewhere, it was largely peaceful. Now, at a point in Lagos, they declared a curfew, and this is where I'm going. They declared a curfew. The moment they declared the curfew, what happened next? Soldiers came in and shot people. People went inside. The actual answers protesters went inside. They left the city to thugs. Now, during the period of their own curfew, that there was no answers protest, 27 police stations was burned, NPA was burned, BRT was burned, um, some will lose mother's house was burned. That there was it was it, there was looting. It was a free for all. So the question you want to ask yourself is: 
is this a result of social media or is this actually a result of a system that has already failed and you are now seeing the repercussions of a failed system so you have people that you that that you don't provide jobs for you have people that you don't send to schools now you have your city in a free for all and you are surprised that those people are breaking into shops and those people are picking things and burning things down really and you're not looking for a scapegoat rather than take responsibility for your silliness you want to blame social media for something that mostly has nothing to do with social media you think the people burning down brt burning down npa burning down the icon you think the people running into the upper palace are on social media you really think so okay so i mean okay. again the protest that was largely pushed by social media was peaceful mm -hmm. it was it was completely peaceful Okay. Until the government started using BRT to transport thugs and senators' well, SUVs we to transport thugs, you saw these things. Doctor so what are we talking about here? Dr. Fumilaya, we cannot 100% say that it was the government because until... And that's why for me, I am hoping okay. that they are able to they get... Were, people were there, they saw them come down from a BRT bus. We actually bus. saw them coming down from a BRT that's, bus. That's yes. what everybody saw. We, we saw that, you know, but we, we still... Did you not see a police truck move thugs? Did you not see it? Is it that was, me making it up? No, let no, me, no, no. Let me, let okay. me quote the... We the, need to the, play the uh, Jean Provocateur. It was photoshopped. Yeah, no. <laughs> we, we, because it was photoshopped. The they put the thugs in the police vehicle. Okay. Okay, let me, let me, let me call Uti. Uti, are you there? No, so, yeah, I am. Um, again, I think that I don't want to, to reduce this conversation to... A particular event and a particular timeline yeah i think that if i'm even going to speak about these events um i'm going to speak about it from the perspective of what i saw in line with what we're talking about today which is the social media you know fake news um and there were so many images which in the days after these events um were deemed to be fake news. So we saw the the play that was the lady with the flag being carried. We saw the people who had died in, in an accident who were said to have been killed, you know, at, at, at the, the, the lucky toll. So, I mean, I want to come back to what you said about um, cybercrime, the Cybercrime Act. I think I disagree with you. Um, the Cybercrime Act doesn't provide, or I, I'm not a lawyer by any measure, but in my understanding, the Cybercrime Act doesn't protect against um, fake news. Uh, against uh, fake news, so it protects against actual cybercrime, like you know, cyber stalking, cyber bullying, hacking, that kind of thing. Now, fake news sits in, in a, a certain cater of its own, where we have you know user created content, and it is out there, and it is a problem, and we have seen whether or not we argue from the perspective, and I think that that's where we can get lost in this conversation, whether we get lo we argue that it's, it's the government perpetrating or it's the people perpetrating, we all can't deny that there's a fake news problem. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is, let's try to answer this question, or I would like you to try to answer this question without the government context, because fake news is a problem around the whole world. So how would you, th how would you think would be, um, or what would you think, think would be a way to combat fake news from a point of perspective of responsibility because this is user generated content okay um so again to look at it from the way you said it everybody has a responsibility government has people have. i can't speak for myself as an individual i can't really speak for government or for anybody else now another way we should look at this fake news thing is there are different types of it. There are different categories of it. And I think we should talk about that before we go too far. So there is misinformation and there is disinformation. I think when we say fake news, we always assume the worst bit of it, which is disinformation. So misinformation is when you pass across false information, but you actually do not have an harmful intent. So there is genuine error. That's where I'm going. There is a genuine error which people can make which anyone can make. And then there is deliberate, in, um, intentional attempt to mislead people with wrong information. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we should really be looking at. So we should not put everything in a basket. For instance, in the UK, 
because of the way it's working in the US, the whole fake news thing and Donald Trump and how they seem to hammer on it all day long, the UK has taken a position where they really don't use the term and they don't like to use the term because what it does is pack everybody, like you already said yourself, Uti, when you introduced, what you call the social media bill is open to all sorts of and manners of interpretation. There are people who make genuine, honest errors. And when they see that they've made an error, they take back what they've said and they try to say, oh, I was wrong about that. Now, when you, when you, when you basket those people into people who are clear-cut propagandists, whether propagandists against the government or propagandists for the government, and you put all of them in the same basket as, oh, it's all fake news, it's all a problem, it's the same problem. Well, I don't think it's the same problem. It is a problem, I agree, but I think what we should rather be talking about is deliberate falsehood, deliberate, for instance, that flag picture that you're saying, I saw that flag picture. We later on found out that it was, um, it was a drama in Jaws or somewhere. But the problem that I have is that is one picture out of a lot of pictures. Of many. How are we suddenly putting all our attention on that one picture, which we know to be false, and somehow the bigger context and the bigger picture of the fact that people have been shot, people have been killed, all get thrown away. And then we are all now fixated on a picture we all now know to be false. If we know it is false, then let's move on from it. For me, that's my position. And, and I'll give you another example. Let me give you another example. In Oshun State, there was a day when people said, I think the governor's convoy shot at protesters. There was something like that. And then Joe Abba tweeted that he, he's seen the news where the governor allegedly shot at protesters. This should not be, this should be condemned and it's bad behavior, something in those lines. Eventually he found out that it wasn't accurate. He put down the tweet and corrected it. Now today, Oshun government and Oshun APC, they all seem to be all over their heads, over that particular genuine Incident. error, which anyone can make, okay. which by the way, does not change the fact that there was huge, problems with protests in Oshogo, people, people, people got attacked and all of that. Mm -hmm. So my problem is... Not lumping everything in one basket. Yes, I get lump, you. Yes, that's my problem. I get don't you. lump everything in one basket, mm -hmm. make it look like it's all the same, mm -hmm. regardless of the context, regardless mm -hmm. of, of... And then, or better still, better still, or better still, there is a situation in Lagos, for instance, where the police shoots at people or soldiers shoot at people. You leave that somehow, and then you are more angry about a celebrity that posted something on Instagram. Hmm. For me, I, I just feel that that is corny and that is funny. Okay, so let us just go. Uh, Uti, hold yes, on. Yes. We need to just quickly take so, a short so. break. Uti, when we return, we'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us, we'll be right back.